This is part two of the seventh episode of the Worst Entertainment Company series. Through this series, I discuss the poor treatment and management idols and trainees suffer at the hands of their companies in the hopes of making fans of K-pop more aware of what goes on behind closed doors. This is part two of the episode on SM Entertainment. If you haven't watched part one yet, I advise you to do so before watching this video because it will make more sense that way. In the first part, I covered the history of SM, the first and the second generation. Before we go ahead, I do want to state that I am not claiming that everything that is mentioned in this video are facts. Some of the things mentioned might be nothing more than accusations or speculation. Please do keep that in mind. With that being said, let's dive into part two. In part one, I consciously made the decision not to talk about Chiny because I was afraid I would be unable to handle the topic properly. But in light of recent events, I realized just how important it is to talk about these events because they shouldn't go untalked of. Therefore, I will shed a light on what happened to Shiny. In 2008, SM announced that they were preparing to debut their new boy group. Their goal with this boy group was for them to be trendsetters. They named the group Shiny, which means the one who receives the light. The five-member group made their debut on May 22nd of 2008 with their song Replay. In that same year, the group won two awards, one for Rookie of the Month and one for Hot New Star. They released their first full album in August of 2008, which did really well, ranking at number three on the charts, selling 30,000 copies at the time. Shiny would only become more popular from that point on with the release of Juliet, Ring Ding Dong, and Lucifer in 2009. They would go on to make their Japanese debut and their success never seemed to slow down, winning multiple awards, selling out concerts, and making their solo debuts until an awful tragedy struck at the end of 2017. On December 18th of 2017, Shiny member Chong Hyun was found unconscious in his apartment. He was immediately taken to the hospital for treatment, but unfortunately Chong Hyun did not make it. After persevering for so many years, Chong Hyun had lost the battle with his own depression. SM Entertainment issued a statement that same day. Hello, this is SM Entertainment. We're sorry to deliver such heart-aching and fortunate news. On December 18th, Shiny member Chong Hyun left our site unexpectedly. He was found unconscious at a residential hotel in Chong Dam Dong Seoul and was rushed to a nearby hospital but was declared dead on the evening of the 18th. The deep sorrow cannot be compared to the ones of his family who had to let go of their loving son and brother, but the employees and artists of SM Entertainment also, in deep shock and sorrow, are offering condolences. Jung Hyun was the best artist who loved music more than anyone and always worked hard for his performance. It is devastating to deliver such sad news to the fans who gave him great love. We ask you to refrain from making rumors or assumption-based reports in respect of his family who are in deep sorrow from the sudden news. As his family wished, his funeral will be carried out in the quietest manner with his family members and co-workers. Once again, we offer our deepest condolences. Jung Hyun hoped that his fans would tell him that he did a good job, and they do. Shawls are extremely proud of Jung Hyun and how well he did. They will always love Jung Hyun for his lively spirit. On January 27th of 2018, SM Entertainment opened a memorial for Jung Hyun at SM Town, a place for fans to share their loving memories of Jung Hyun and to leave a message for him. But only three months later, SM announced that they would be closing Chong Hyun's memorial. They thanked the fans for their messages of love and support, and they promised they would keep them safe. SM's way of remembering Chong Hyun's memorial was by taking pictures of it and uploading it onto Shiny's official fan pages, which left fans to feel very upset, understandably. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
Shiny continued their journey by telling their story of light after Jonghyun's passing, releasing Good Evening, I Want You, Our Page, and Countless. Jonghyun is still and will always be a part of Shiny's story. Shiny will always remain as five. SM Entertainment has always had a strong desire to expand and to break into the Chinese market. They would start to scout Chinese or Taiwanese trainees and create a subunit of one of their existing groups that would allow them to make their debut in China. While this did increase SM's impact on the Chinese market, the impact of the Chinese and Taiwanese idols on the Korean music industry remained relatively limited. It appeared that they were being treated very differently from SM's Korean idols, and so SM's infamous reputation of them mistreating their Chinese idols ensued. Shopa Junior M. To better understand SM's history with their Chinese idols, we have to go back to Super Junior. Because in 2008, SM would make their first attempt at breaking into the Chinese market by creating Super Junior M, a subunit consisting of four Korean and three Chinese slash Taiwanese members. SM announced that they would add Zhu Mi and Henry to the group. This wouldn't go over well with the fans. They started their only 13 protest. They even tried to buy stocks in the company so they could make sure that Sumi and Henry would not be added to Super Junior. NSM fed into this because outside of Super Junior M, members Zumi and Henry were practically inactive. Even though they were signed with SM Entertainment, a Korean agency, and it took quite a while for them to make their debut in Korea. Henry made his Korean debut in 2013 and Zumi in 2014, and although they were finally given the opportunity to make their solo debut in Korea, SM pushed their careers as TV and radio show hosts more than they pushed their music careers. Gang would become the first Chinese idol to file a lawsuit against SM Entertainment. Like I previously discussed in part 1, Hung Gang claimed that SM Entertainment had treated him extremely poorly over the years, that SM kept him from traveling to China and seeing his family, his requests to take a break were denied time and time again, and so he demanded for his contract with the company to be terminated. The lawsuit would cause the subunit to suspend all of their activities. But this was only temporary as Super Junior M returned in 2011 after Hung Gang had officially left SM Entertainment. Super Junior M would see the addition of two of Super Junior's members, and the subunit would release new music every few years. In 2014, the political tension between China and Korea would grow, and that's when SM Entertainment stopped promoting Super Junior M, and they haven't released any music since. SM Entertainment would start to prepare to debut a new boy group, and again they felt the need to expand their reach. Only this time around, they would integrate the Chinese subunit into the concept of their new boy group. The group EXO. That group would be divided into two subgroups, EXO-K and EXO-M. Both subgroups made their debut with MAMA on the 8th of April of 2012. XOK would promote in Korea and XOM would promote in China. Both subunits would promote at the same exact time. The next year, both subgroups would unite and record the monstrosity that is Wolf. In 2014, EXO released Overdose. Once again, XOK and XOM promoted the song separately. EXO was doing really well and SM's new strategy seemed to be working. That was until May of 2014 when XOM member Chris filed a lawsuit against SM Entertainment. Chris wanted to terminate his contract with the company and he claimed that SM Entertainment never really respected his opinions and most importantly, neglected his health issues. Back in 2014, Chris was diagnosed with myocarditis, which could lead to sudden death in some cases. Upon examination, doctors concluded that Chris was in need of treatment, but this went ignored by SM and didn't even take it into account when assembling the schedule for the group's activities. Chris was oftentimes seen reaching for his chest during performances, which clearly shows that he was in pain at the time. On top of this, he also claimed that profits were distributed unfairly among members and that Assem treated him as a machine rather than an actual artist. 
Only five months later, fellow XOM member Lu Han also filed a lawsuit against SM. He too wanted to end his contract with SM Entertainment and claimed that the XOK members were treated differently from the XOM members. He said, quote, SM treated XOK filled with Korean members differently from how they treated the XOM members with Chinese members. Lu Han said in the lawsuit, From the beginning of our debut, XOK received support from SM and actively did promotions. But XOM had no promotions, received no financial backing, and endured a difficult time. End quote. As a result, he was suffering from overexhaustion and stress. SM then announced that EXO would go on as a 10 member group while the legal battles continued. But that was not the end of it. The following year, in 2015, the father of XOM member Tao posted a letter on Weibo in which he expressed his concern for his son's well-being and his desire for his son to leave EXO and to return home. It reads, in these three years since his debut, he's gotten all sorts of injuries, large and small, back pains, body pains, leg pains, to the point that during each performance, whether I'm physically there or at home, if he does a flip, I will be worried to no end. Nervous that his old injuries will only worsen. This is especially true for overseas performances. Sometimes the stage is slippery. Sometimes it rains. Before every performance, I will be sure to tell him again that if the stage is wet, if it's raining, if it seems unsafe, to not do the flip. But every time he says he does not want to disappoint everyone, comforting me by saying that he will be careful. But in the end, I can only see through Weibo that he has injured himself again, and it hurts me. I can't take care of him. Sometimes I can't contact him nor go, go to the performance. This is burning pain. It's hard to describe with words sitting at home clutching onto my phone to wait for any news. Other people will never know. Tao's father also revealed that SM made promises to him that they didn't keep and also alludes to the fact that SM kept Tao from contacting his family. Tao was actually seen in a wheelchair and unable to walk long before his father posted his letter on Weibo, but at that time, SM would force Tao to train and perform despite him having several severe injuries that SM would refuse to get treated. SM responded to the letter by saying that they would seek a solution through negotiation, but Tao later revealed that they failed to come to an agreement, and so he also filed a lawsuit against the company. SM would win the lawsuit against Tao in 2016, and he would actually have to pay the company because he failed to do so after his initial departure. Later that year, Chris and Lu Han's lawsuits would come to an end. The court decided not to terminate their contracts with SM, so their contracts will remain valid until 2022. And their Chinese agency has to share their profits with SM Entertainment. In 2018, after several appeals, it was announced that the court decided that Tao's contract with SM Entertainment would remain valid as well. The three lawsuits in combination with the political tension between China and Korea would put an end to XOK and XOM. EXO would then continue on as a nine-member group that would grow extremely successful despite the controversy, releasing hit songs like Call Me Baby, Love Me Right, Lotto, Monster, Coco Bop, Power, the list goes on. It took a long time for EXO to return after they released Power, and interestingly enough, SM Entertainment had debuted NCT the previous year. Is history repeating itself here? Unlike FX, EXO wasn't completely left in the dust, but SM did keep them locked away for a long time, and EXO returned with Tempo more than one year after the release of Power. And it seems that SM is planning to leave big intervals in between releases for EXO, perhaps because they are not the newest boy group anymore. And another interesting thing to note is that EXO never appeared on a lot of variety shows. Despite being one of SM's most popular groups, and they barely push to promote their comebacks, it's almost like SM doesn't want their groups to succeed. As you can imagine, 2014 was a rough year for SM Entertainment. With Sully going on a hiatus, the controversy surrounding Jessica's departure from SNSD, and two lawsuits being filed against the company, they weren't getting the best publicity.
On the 3rd of August of 2014, a Sum Entertainment debuted Red Velvet. Their debut came out of the blue and something seemed off. Their debut just felt poorly timed and rushed, causing their debut song Happiness to receive mixed reactions. Five months later, Red Velvet would return with Ice Cream Cake and a Sum Entertainment announced that they would be adding Yeri to the group. But a lot of fans didn't like the thought of another member being added to the group after Red Velvet's debut. And so they started to cyber bully Yeri, calling her lazy and talentless. However, a lot of Revelovs don't believe that Yeri was an afterthought. They think that Yeri was always meant to debut with Red Velvet. When all of the controversy struck back in 2014, SM had to come up with something quickly, and so they debuted Red Velvet in order to distract the audience from all of the negative publicity they were getting. And Yeri was even in the music video for Happiness for a split second. This only further proves that she was already a part of Red Velvet, but since she was 15 at the time, she wasn't allowed to make her debut just yet. SM easily could have waited 5 months for Red Velvet to make their debut with Yeri. Making them debut without Yeri was a bad move on SM's part because she just became the target for hate. But desperate times call for desperate measures, I suppose. Red Velvet's career started to skyrocket after the release of Ice Cream Cake, and they would later return with Dum Dum. It was noticeable during their promotions that both Wendy and Joy had put on some weight. They were still a healthy weight, but according to the idol standards, they were considered too big. Making them the new target of cyberbullies, and it is suspected that SM then forced the members of Red Velvet to go on a diet, and their managers would start to monitor them extremely closely. By the time Red Velvet released Red Flavor, both Joy and Wendy had lost a noticeable amount of weight. While Joy seemed happy with her diet and her weight, Wendy was looking alarmingly thin and unhappy. The hurtful comments of netizens and SM's strict dietary restrictions and close monitoring had taken a huge toll on Wendy's mental health. She had become extremely self-conscious of her weight and has said during a radio interview that she only likes to wear baggy clothes when she's put on weight. There are clips of Wendy where she's picking at her food and looks uncomfortable and nervous when their managers are watching her eat, and she has even indirectly admitted to starving herself. Instead of sticking up for their idols, SM decides to feed into this negativity by forcing Red Velvet to diet and monitoring them so closely to the point that the members have become extremely self-conscious and insecure. And you can tell that the way the situation was handled has really impacted the mentalities and the mental health of the members, which is really messed up if you think about it. Over the years, Red Velvet has secured its place as one of the most beloved girl groups in K-pop. Their popularity is ever-growing and they still have so much to show. But Reveloves are worried that Red Velvet will be forgotten once SM debuts their new girl group, since SM Entertainment has a tendency to do this. If you think about what happened to FX, unfortunately, it is a very possible outcome. As SM started to prepare to debut a new boy group, they clearly wanted a group that could become more successful than their previous boy groups, a group that they could market to a worldwide audience, and that would give them unlimited options. <laughs> This group would go by the name of NCT and would have an unlimited member concept. The group would be divided in multiple subunits based in various cities around the world. It is pretty likely that SM took inspiration from the Japanese girl group AKB48. They were one of the first groups, if not the first, to take on this concept. SM debuted NCT's first unit, NCTU, on April 9th of 2016 with the release of Seventh Sense. At the time, the unit consisted of six members, but NCTU is a rotational unit, meaning that the members change with every comeback. In that summer of 2016, NCT's second unit, NCT 127, made their debut with Firetruck. NCT 127 is a fixed unit that debuted with seven members and is based in Seoul, Korea. Later that summer in 2016, NCT Dream made their debut with Chewing Gum. NCT Dream is a unit for NCT's underage members and the members will graduate once they turn 18. What is important to know is that all of these units promote separately. 
And new members can be added at any given point in time. For example, Doyoung and Johnny were added to 127 in late 2016. NCT and its units started to gain more fans over time with the releases of Limitless, My First and Last, Cherry Bomb, and We Young. In 2018, NCT saw the addition of Kun, Lucas, and Jungwoo. Not too long after NCT's debut, rumors about Taeyong of NCT 127 and NCT U start to surface. According to these rumors, Taeyong was scamming people during his teenage years and he sold what people believed to be figurines but sent his customers bricks instead and would then ghost them after receiving their money. However, these rumors weren't completely true because Taeyong actually sold defective Gundam toys at a very low price, and Knets clearly twisted the story to fit their own narrative with the intent of hurting Taeyong's image. SM didn't stand up for Taeyong but instead made him apologize for his actions after these rumors spread. And even though Taeyong didn't actually scam anyone, SM just going along with it makes it worse it's almost like admitting guilt even though he didn't really do anything wrong. And once again, they feed into the negativity that was created by the K-Nets in the first place. During this time, N-Citizens also started noticing that the members were behaving quite strangely during multiple V-Lives. All of a sudden, they would look nervous and become really quiet while they were having fun just moments before. During one V-Live, Taeyong called the managers out and told the fans that the managers were telling them to stop. The fans just want the managers to treat the members of NCT with respect because the way they treat them sometimes is just outright ridiculous. But throughout these three years, N-Citizens have noticed that Win Win receives very little lines. You literally miss it if you blink. Win Win is both part of NCT 127 and Wave V, but recently Win Win's situation has become more concerning. When NCT 127's first ever tour was announced, Win Win was not in the teaser photo, neither did he attend the SM Town performance in Chile. He's also been excluded from NCT 127's photo shoots and merchandise. According to SM, his absence is due to the conflicting schedules between 127 and Wave V. However, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense since Mark, who was in all three subunits, never had any trouble with conflicting schedules. Now, what is even weirder is that his fellow members aren't even allowed to talk about him. When they talked about Win Win during a V Live, their managers cut them off really quickly and asked them to stop talking about him. Fans are also suspecting a sum of mistreating NCT Dream member Ren Chun. During a V-Live, Ren Chun was asked by the managers to switch seats with Ji Song so they could push their popular Chen Song ship. And not too long ago, a clip of a confused Ren Chun surfaced, causing fans to feel worried and to start speculating. In this clip, you can see Ren Chun walking in the rain alone, looking very confused. The popular theory at the time was that a manager had taken Ren Chun's spot in the van and that he was out in the rain looking for a different van. But later on, Renjun clarified the situation during a V-Live.
그래서 어디 어디 계세요? 이런데 바로 옆에 있더라고요. <웃음> 아 옆에서 전화 한 거야. 아, 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 바로 옆에 있었더라고. 그래서 제가 아 그래서 하고 바로 차를 타고 갔어요. 근데 Coincidentally, both of these members happen to be Chinese. So, could that be history repeating itself? Or has Assem finally learned from their troubled past? Only time will tell. And of course, NCT's concept was another perfect opportunity for the company to breach out. Four years after their last Chinese subunit, SM would make another attempt at breaking into the Chinese market, and this time with NCT. They announced that they would debut a subunit called Wei V. The group consists of four of the original NCT members, Kun, Ten, Win Win, and Lucas, and three additional Chinese members. They made their debut with a Chinese version of Regular on January 17th. Wavy's success continues to grow with every single comeback, but what is interesting to note is that SM almost makes Wavy feel as its own separate entity instead of a subunit of NCT. Their name doesn't even have the word NCT in it, and they're getting their own light stick, and this is clearly driving a divide between NCT fans and Wavy fans, with fans saying that Wavy is not part of NCT. Perhaps this is a new strategy of Assam's to make their new Chinese subunit more successful than their previous ones. One note that they will hopefully have taken is to treat their Chinese idols better, because if not, this will not go down well. SM should really reevaluate how they're treating NCT regardless, because the way they're treating them now could possibly harm both NCT and SM as a company in the future. While writing the script for this video, news broke that Sully from FX passed away on Monday, the 14th of October 2019. She was found unconscious in her apartment by her manager. Paramedics arrived at the scene and unfortunately concluded that Sully had passed away. Back in 2009, Sully debuted with FX, and while she was promoting with the group, she had fallen a victim to cyberbullying. Sully was critiqued for how she acted, what she said, and how she dressed just because she was a strong, independent woman who wasn't afraid to speak her mind. But this constant inpour of malicious comments started to affect her mental health quite badly, and in 2014 it was announced that Sully would go on an indefinite hiatus, and she would eventually leave FX. Five years later, Sully returned to music with Goblin, and she seemed to be doing better. But even after all these years, she was dealing with the aftermath from years and years of cyberbullying. The comments ate away at her, slowly deteriorating her mental health, sending her into a severe depression. She felt isolated and like she was carrying this big burden by herself. Assem posted a statement that confirmed Sully's passing. This is Assem Entertainment. We are sorry to tell everyone the sorrowful and sad news. Sully has left us. We cannot believe the situation and we are simply in a state of grief. Please refrain from spreading speculative articles or rumors in respect of the bereaved's family who were saddened by the sudden tragedy. We express our deepest condolences to the deceased who went on their final path. Not too long after, it was revealed that Sully reportedly asked for Assem's help on multiple occasions to take legal action against malicious comments, but Assem failed to do so. The news of Sully's passing still seems unfathomable and leaves a lot of us shocked, heartbroken, but mostly angered, and because we are experiencing so many emotions at the same time, a lot of us don't know what to do with ourselves, and we want to project our emotions, our anger, onto something or someone else. We want someone to feel guilt over the consequences of their actions. 
So we can put our minds at ease by knowing that they will have to carry that feeling of guilt for the rest of their lives. And I'm sorry to disappoint you, but the fact of the matter is that there's not just one person to blame. It's just not that simple. But that doesn't mean that there wasn't more that could have been done. Could SM have done more? Absolutely. 100%. Could we as a community have done more? Yes, probably. Could the fans have thought twice about how their words could affect the idol before posting their vile comment? They should have. Sadly, we cannot change what happened, but what we can do is let these entertainment companies know that they should take their idol's mental health seriously, that they should take legal action against people that leave malicious comments, and that it is their duty to keep their idol safe. Recently, a bill has been proposed by members of the National Assembly in South Korea. The bill would go by the name of Sully Act. This law aims to enforce stricter rules against anonymous users that leave malicious comments. The bill is supported by 200 celebrities and 100 organizations. Sully's act will officially be proposed in December at the National Assembly. This is a great initiative that will hopefully be approved, yet I can't help but wonder why something tragic has to happen in order for action to be taken. But that doesn't take away that it is a step in the right direction. It appears SM only stands by their idols when they're doing well and are making them profit, but they fail to do the same when their idols are met with trouble or controversy. They have clearly failed at this because the troubles of their idols don't benefit them. And that hurts their idols. It hurt them in the past and it continues to hurt them now. It also appears that they haven't learned from their past mistakes. That does not only hurt their idols, but them as a company as well. And that just clearly shows that they don't have their idols' best interest at heart, which is just upsetting. And that is why they are one of the worst entertainment companies at the moment. I genuinely hope that they finally realize that they need to change because more of their idols will be harmed if they don't.